It's Rob in the house. <laughs> Yo! My little, my little helper. A little bit of help. A really quick video here. It's not really a tutorial. It's not really anything really. Just wanted to show, show you my... Um, a way of doing carbon without expensive molds and stuff like that. So those are going to be side seals for the Clio. I already made one, I have to admit, I just wanted to see whether it will work. So basically this is an offcut of uh, D-Bond. This is the same material that I use for flat sheets and the few uh, splitters and stuff like that. It's very, very good. As soon as, once you seal it, it's very smooth and it's very good. So, because the side seal is gonna be a corner, so that's what I did. I cut two sort of pieces. They're stuck together with some sort of uh, L-shaped brackets and everything. So they are nice and rigid. So the next step of the process is always seal the corner. So you don't want air leaking out. So I put glue gun, just with hot glue, you, you seal the corner and then you actually apply wax. So release wax. Well, it's not really a release wax. It's basically wax. Nothing sticks to it. That's why you kind of use it. And it's really good. You can heat it up with a heat gun and it becomes really, really pliable. And you can really work it with, 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 with your fingers or some different, different smudge tools. So the next thing, because we want it not just a square piece. We want it, you know, a little bit more exciting. So what I came up with, and thanks to my wife again, Tammy, she asked me a couple of... She asked me a couple of weeks ago um, to have a look at the draining on the on the garage. So yeah, this is just a drain sort of pipe, but it's a really nice profile and the size is what I need. So what I did is I kind of like measured it and I cut a wedge into it. So this thing goes into the imaginatively, well, not imaginatively, into our imaginative mold. It's not actually budget. It is a mold. Imaginary. Right? Imaginary. It is a mold. So this thing sits like this, as you can see. Literally, a little bit of glue gun on both sides. It doesn't need to be there permanently because we are only doing a one-off. Um, yeah, a bit more wax to seal around the whole thing. And then we're literally ready to cut the carbon, which is almost pre-cut because I made one before. I think I mentioned it in the previous videos. And yes, I'm trying to push my Amazon account. I am an affiliate and I do get a little commission. I mean, what do you think? Building race cars is free. So whenever you buy, I get a tiny commission. Anyways, this glue gun is just marvel. Oh, oh, oh honestly, I love it. it. Has a really large chamber on the inside. So once you heat it up, it takes about five minutes to heat the whole thing up. Then you can literally unplug it and you can run almost two full sticks without it being plugged in. Mm, and it's not very expensive. Tech 806, but I'll leave a link to Amazon in the description. So, come here, my operator guy. I really need an operator. It just makes it so much nicer. So, this is how it's going to sit. It's obviously a reverse location because on the previous one it was there because it's on the other side. So, this one we put it on this side. So, I roughly remember because obviously it's not for sale. This is just for me. I don't need to measure anything. I, I can trust my eyes and it will be close enough. So all I need to do is literally put just a little bit of this. Very quickly, something like this. I reckon that's the spot. That's the beauty about the glue gun. It's so quick, but also when it touches colder surfaces, it sets off really, really quick. So actually it's something to be mindful of. If you're sticking something to really cold stuff, the other stuff needs to be hot because otherwise it sets off too quick. But if it's like this, you know, kind of cool stuff, like a surface of wooden board, it gets cured pretty quick. So that's literally all you need. It doesn't need to be sort of permanently stuck on because we're still putting, putting the wax uh, around it and effectively all it is is just creating a shape for Kevlar or carbon or... Is it filming? What, mm -hmm. what did it do? Nothing. Yeah. It was me. So for the thing to literally just go around like that and then vacuum pushes it around. So let's put some wax. 
found it. Okay. All right, see some wax. Come on, do some wax. Warm it up with your warm, manly hands. You can use plasticin. Um, it's a bit cheaper, but it's not as good because it's not kind of designed for it. Um, resin don't stick to plasticin, and obviously they don't stick to this. Uh, that's why you can use. I mean. This is actually really, really cheap. I mean, it comes from, well, obviously, easy composites. Uh, I'm not going to leave any, any links. I'm sure you can buy it somewhere else, but it says soft modeling dough for schools and leisure. So it's not even specialized for carbon or whatever. So yeah, 650 grams block. Lasts me quite a while. I do reuse it though. As you can see, all sealed everywhere around. That's literally all you need prevent resin from going under and it creates a nice little radius on your corners obviously with with this wax you can <laughs> children ice cream truck um, um yeah obviously with wax you can create whatever radius you want to create um it's entirely up to you i kind of just use a finger and it kind of follows the curve so for me, sort of this this radius is good enough. So now, this is what I prepared earlier. It's too wide, but it's fine because I can just trim it in situ makes it a little bit easier because it's almost enough cut already because you can't really use it for anything else it's literally just for this so we kind of loosely put it into place this first step always takes a bit longer than all the other layers because obviously this is a visual layer and you really need it to be and what i found if you're like me my hands get all buggered up so you get all these little sort of skin sort of calluses things they get caught especially on kevlar carbon kevlar sheets so i need to work in gloves because i've done it so many times where you're trying to smooth a sheet and then you just get snug and you just drag one of the fibers out but with gloves it doesn't do that so that is Fairly good. And then you just kind of massage it into place how you want it to be. Can you use adhesive spray? I will, but first I need to put it sort of loosely to where it needs to be. And then I'll stick cut it. it. Right. And then you kind of peel one side, a bit of adhesive, put it back in. Because what I found for large sheets and especially with the compound curves and stuff, if you spray, for example, if I were to spray this whole thing, there's absolutely no way you can actually put it sort of neatly. It will just sort of get stuck. So you kind of have to do it in stages. So it's always better to put it dry where you can still sort of maneuver it around and then you peel off and then you sort of spray. Because all you need is a tiny amount. All it needs to do is kind of just keep it in place. You're not actually sticking it to the mold because if you stick it to the mold, um, not only you will get a visible residue sort of, uh, even though this stuff is really, really good, it's not your sort of normal spray adhesive. This one is almost invisible and actually kind of dissolves with resins, but still you need to sort of use it very, very little. On the other layers, you can use as much as you want. You can literally just drown it because uh, when I do skinning, that's what I do. So in order for carbon dialing, especially to go into sort of tight corners, just use plenty of it and it, it's, it's fine in between layers. Um, 
Of course, I have to mention that if it's a proper structural part, then this adhesive can impact the strength of your final part. But for something like this, where strength is not really paramount, because it's, it's not really structural, there's sort of a little bit of a body trim, um, we can do as much as we can. And now we just have to trim it a little bit. Oh yeah, Kevlar by actual air, and then I put reinforcing um, lantosauric, but not the full thing, literally just corners, just to create a little bit more stiffness. And then we cover it with two layers of carbon. Um, bit of a waste to use double layer of carbon on the inside, really, but we want it light and I have Kind of an off cut, sort of. It's not really an off cut, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Sometimes. Just here. Mm -hmm. Is it open there? Yeah. Huh? applying a vacuum bag it's always a bit of a hateful tedious moment because you need to make sure nothing gets in between the tape in between the thing it needs to be nice and flat because any sort of creases can lead to air leaks and it's just a total nightmare and I've been doing it for for years now and I still can't get 100% sort of track record with no leak, no leak bags. It's, I mean, ask anybody who does composites, that is probably the most difficult thing. Wait a second, sure. so there's no, there's no pleats in this? There are pleats. Oh, Here, okay. Why do you need pleats if it's a flat piece? You only have pleats in corners where you have compound things. So I have pleat here, they'll split here and pleat here where we need to bunch up and where it needs to go into uh, cavities I know, on the flat piece fr massive yeah but that's that's not uh, if you have a big pleat there and you have plenty of material it, it will go I, I, i've done this before yeah once. yeah i would pleat it I've, I've done it before where you have so many pleats and it's 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 a nightmare well it's not it's just in most places like i said in, in flat areas there's no need for plate, like. Well, I mean, all. if you are um, leaving like excess in the middle, then. Well, that's uh, what I mean. So you have your plate on the uh, side. Oh yeah, fine. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mass, this massive material one. there, and sure. then it can go. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So you're not. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, that's a massive plate. Yeah, you're not stretching it from the inside. Also, if you're doing it yourself, do not be stingy with the bag. It's fairly cheap, but I just literally use plenty, leave a lot. I've done this mistake where you try and be like, and you cut it to size, it never works. You always run out of a bag and you always, then you have to patch it up and it never works 100%. So the bag has to be extremely oversized of your thing. Because you see here, all I'm gonna do is literally just trim it. I mean, you don't even need to trim it. So it's, yeah, bag always really oversized. It just makes your life so much easier. Well, applying it doesn't make it that easier because you have all this excess material, but believe me, 
I mean, in fact, what you can do if you're trying this, do it two ways. Do one where you think, oh, I'll save some material and cut really close. And then do how I say with like a massive amount of overhang. You will see that the overhang just works so much better. And now we're coming to the pleats on this side. I really need to buy a roller. I've been doing it for such a long time and I still do it by, by hand. And it's just not the best idea. I mean, obviously the pleats you can and you have to. But where is the flat? You really need one of those. It's just, just a fake roller and then you kind of roll and it makes it so much. I think uh, there's a better. roller that you can buy with a little raised area in it as well. So you run the raised area yeah. down through the middle. I need to, but it's just... One of those things, you look at materials when you're buying extra supplies and you order this, that, and you always forget. Also, if you do enough of this, you kind of quickly realize that all these consumables, you can't be sort of stingy. So this, for example, too, it's fairly cheap, but before, I remember I was like, right, measure, this is how much I need. If it doesn't work, then if it's too short and it snags, you're like, whatever. You're literally like, right, I need this, whatever, the off cut, you can cut later. It just makes it makes your life a little bit easier and more productive because there's no way you can ever achieve perfect sort of sizing by measuring because there's a lot of snagging. And this is how I attach the tube onto the inside. I mean, obviously none of these, those, these are my ideas. All I know is from YouTube, watching Easy Composites um, videos, and I've been trial and error. So none of it is crazy new. <clears throat> so yeah, we we'll just put this into here like that. And then we run the bag right to the corner, over the top, pressing it nice and firm. And now into this corner, and we have this much material to make us a nice split in here. So this is our feed line for resin, and what I've done. I made those little wooden packs because you see how there is weight with a thing and it just sort of lifts it up so what I do is just kind of that yeah. keeps this in place so you know you're not gonna snag the bastard And no, I'm not scared of giving out all those tips because A, I know about them from YouTube. So somebody already said it, so I'm not saying anything new like I said. But also, I want you guys to try. I have messages, literally, inbox full of it. People, I want to say thanking me, but they're not really thanking me. They are just sharing their experiences. They're saying that I've inspired them. I showed them that it is attainable and it is. And a lot of people try it and get really good results on the first try. And I'm like, you see, I told you it was fairly easy. So just go out and try it. So it's, it should not cost an absolute fortune. I mean, it still costs a fortune, but mainly because materials are so expensive. And usually it's when you make mistakes, that's when it becomes costly. The pump is in a shed just so it doesn't buzz in here so it's quiet and i can control it with a phone so if i need to squeeze the stuff in so for example right now i pause it and it will give me time to push the bag into all the crevices because remember last thing you want to do is for the bag to start bridging bridging is when it doesn't completely cover a 90 degree corner and the bag sort of sits like that 
this cavity is where all the resin is so you need the bag to go as deep as possible that's why you're using pleats because pleats allow give in the bag sort of stretch because obviously naturally it will stretch a bit but it would not stretch like that so that's why you need to really push it into corners I'd say that's nice. That is uh, an innovation, honestly. Oh, Using the um, on off button. Yeah, you've got a massive leak. I can hear it from here. Okay. Oh no, yeah, it's good. No leak. The air gun, yeah, no, that's fine. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Too much. Oh, it's pressing the. Well, that didn't happen last time because I did have an air leak. Um, okay. Which basically means we don't have an air leak, so it worked. But we don't want it to press this hard. So what I'm going to have to do is... Uh, do you think that it's uh, broken the seal on the... No, I don't think it's broken the seal. Are you sure? Need to use a regulator. <laughs> Pretty much the infusion. You have a bucket. I use this because they are brilliant. Kids drink lots of milk, so we probably go through five, six of this a week. So I have like this nice little stash of those in here. And it's free. All I do is just cut the top off. Not only it has a handle, so when you're doing a wet lay or whatever, it's you can hold it. But yeah. Anyways, um, tube going in. And starts infusing vacuum is pulling from that side so it just draws all the resin through the laminate um, this might take a while actually to be honest with you this is actually faster than it was last time I could increase vacuum ever so slightly although we are pretty much at the limit anyway can so I would suspect shape. this will take an hour an hour and a half what time is it now it's 12.30, we have to leave in one hour. The next day. The very next day. As always, left it for around 20 hours to dry and set. I actually took it out into the sun to speed up the process. So now let's take this out so I can show you what we have. So as you've seen, sometimes it can be difficult and sometimes it does require the help of your mate because, um, yeah, uh, Here we are. This is basically what we have. Um, yeah, it's exactly what I was expecting it to be because the second, this is the second one. The first one is exactly the same. As you can see, we have a nice little sort of channel in here. And what it does, this is not just a visual sort of like, oh, look, the inside.
side, whatever. It actually creates extra strength because obviously it's compound and obviously corners is what gives it strength. But it will be sort of fixed from here. And a little bit of flex is good. That's what we want. And I didn't pr probably didn't really talk about composition, or maybe I did. So it has lantosauric in places like that. So basically they act like a thick L-shaped brackets. So this thing is effectively ready to be on the car. Ah, look, there's a little dry spot. It's okay because we're actually cutting it like that. They're not going to be this big. So yeah, the next step of the process is literally you clean this up because obviously all the wax gets transferred into the part and you don't want that. I usually just use anything to scrape it. And also, if you heat it up with a heat gun, you can wipe it off with just tissue. It wipes off really, really well. And then the further residue, if you're coating it with clear or whatever, you can literally use acetone, thinner, almost anything, because the resin, epoxy resin, can be, well, withstands pretty much any chemical. So don't worry about damaging it. I mean, don't quote me on that. I've been using pretty much any chemicals that I have it in hand. Um, some will say I'll oh, use something specific for, for, for this, but I found that epoxy resin does not react with any chemicals, so you can use pretty much anything you have. So yeah, clean it up, wash it with whatever, and then trim it, and you're ready to fit. So this is definitely lighter than the other seals that I have from aluminium. I mean, naturally, of course. Not only because it's a single part, the aluminium has the inside and this. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm gonna finish this one here. Really quick tutorial on how to make sort of parts from not a mold, but literally two pieces of wood, a little bit of time, some resin and lots of offcuts. And also you see the inside, that was literally so many different offcuts and you cannot see because everything just blends together, providing that you can kind of layer them uh, together as as you will so yeah thank you very much for watching as always guys don't forget to subscribe also air fresheners please why are you not buying them i have thousands of those things i thought they're going to be popular honestly the smell is amazing everyone is you know and it has a little clear dangling in it just help a brother out anyways see you in the next one bye bye